With imagination, wizard Randy Crawford of Band Aid now. Red Rose Radio. Well, thanks to Cresha for the news, and welcome back to part two of the Soul Source Top 25 of 1985. Five six one thousand. No other number will do. You'll really get swore at by a big airy security man. Preston five six one thousand. We'll be back after the news. Red Rose Radio. Preston 561000 for the second hour of It's Your Turn. To the lines to join our first contestant of the second hour, Les Matthews, a salesman. How do? How do, Alan? Flogging building materials. That's correct, yes. There's not a lot of building going on these days, is there really? Right, it's more refurbishment building, you know, the second hand materials. What, 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 what? Second hand mater building materials, slates, etc. Oh, I see. This stuff that's come from when they drag houses down. That's correct, yeah. You get in there and, and buy the stuff and then flog it again. That's right, yeah. Hey, smart. Is, is that a good job, that? It's, it's, it's better than anything else I've done at the moment, yeah. It's a bit funny, though, isn't it? Buying... I mean, <laughs> you know, how do you go about buying second-hand slates? Well, I don't actually buy them. My boss buys them. I see. I sell them for him. <laughs> and does he buy them when they're still on the roof, or does he buy them after they've chopped them down? Well, he buys them when they drop down, virtually. Yeah, he goes along and says, OK, I'll have that bit and That's that bit right, and that yeah. bit. So, all right. Anyway, Les, we don't have to spin the wheel because we've got this question that's been going on for some time now, for about 20 minutes, if the truth be known. You get the same question, because we keep them until they're answered correctly, and it's which John Carpenter film in 1983 was based on a killer car? Uh, Christine. Christine, of course it was. And the clue, of course, the first bit of the name, Christ, or Christ, if you prefer, was based on a season roundabout now. Christmas. Smart. Well done, Les. Do you want odds? Or evens? Okay. Hey, yo! <laughs> it's another winner we've got. We'll be going bankrupt. We will, to be sure we will. Pick a number, avoiding 19 and 9, between 1 and 20. 7. 7! <laughs> Wobbly Warren! What's in the window, Wobbly? Well, without singing it this time, Les, you've won for yourself a quartz carriage clock. Smart as hell. So you want a quartz carriage clock, and you've also got to go at the jackpot, as signified by the rather loud noise you heard just before the Wobbly Warren jingle. And Wobbly Warren's going to see a Les, aren't you? Yep, I'm going to see Les Dennis and Dustin G in Cinderella at the Southport Theatre this Thursday. Yeah, isn't he the clever one? So he's looking forward to that. Hey, you're not Les Dennis, are you? You're Les Matthews. That's right, yeah. You're not the one with them turkeys, are you? No, no. That's your Trying, to, trying to get him. <laughs> Not keen on him this year. <laughs> <laughs> Turkey was great, but you don't get rid of them, do you? You sort of have them around for weeks. Oh, it's lasted forever. I know, it's crazy. And I went out for a Greek meal last night, had about, had about nine courses, and this morning I'm still full. <laughs> it's true, I couldn't even get my marmalade down today. Oh, Not too worry. Anyway, you've won a prize. What you've won is your carriage clock for your number seven. It's quite a nice clock, too. And you've also won a go at the jackpot, so we need the pop jingle for that and if we can find it we'll put it in and the jackpot prize this month has got to be won today because it's the last sunday in december betty mcquillan is currently in the lead with six she's of collingwood road in chorley and the prize les i'm sure you know what it is but i'll tell you anyway is a case each of white wine red wine and champagne from wymot's wine warehouses of wigan and litham plus a Philips CD 150 compact disc player. Altogether, that prize is worth probably in the £500 mark. And it's certainly heading that way any road. You've got to beat six. When you're ready, off we go. Odds to starters. And it's number 11, which is an odd number. That's one. Odds. 
Number 12. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, Les, you've still got your carriage clock. Thanks for taking part. Do you yeah. want to say hello to anyone? Yeah, I'd like to say hello to all my family that may be listening at this time in the morning, and especially my wife and my little lad, Michael. OK, Les Matthews, Longacre, Clayton in Preston, <laughs> and his little lad, Michael. ta -ra. Thanks. Norman Cousins. Are you all right? All right, yeah, good morning to you. I'm uh -huh. glad Les knew Christine, cos I didn't. <laughs> Did you not? No, I've, I've not, not been to the pictures for about 20 years or more. I know they're feeling well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been a few times, but not so much. I know. The trouble is, these days, and the cinemas are great places, you get all the atmosphere and all that stuff. When I do go, I go to the Odeon in Preston, and yeah. there's a lot of atmosphere when you're actually in the cinema. But these days, why go out in the cold? You've only got to wait a couple of years and they're on video, aren't they? That's right. I mean, yeah. one of the films I did go and see and enjoyed immensely was Superman. It was on the telly over Christmas. Yeah, was that the Mark 1 too? That was the Mark 1. I've seen them all in actual fact, and yeah. Supergirl, but they were great. Yeah, yeah. But never mind. They yeah. come on the telly fairly quick. Yeah. But we'll have to hope you don't, <laughs> you don't get a film question, Norman. Oh, hopefully, yes. Never mind. What sort of things are you good at? Um, not a lot. I... Not a lot? <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> no. You've not done it well for 20 years either. Oh, no, I've been retired four years and I just potter about, so do my best at everything I can do. Right, well, let's hope you do your best today. I let's will. get you the question. Hey, 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 what you doing to me? Doing to me? Hey, it's gone on number seven again. It Ooh. spends a lot of time on there. I think it's fiddled this wheel. <laughs> Which, as we all know, is a sport question. And I haven't got one anyway. Oh, this is it. This is it. Mm. Sport. Archery. <laughs> <laughs> it's not so clever. This is very difficult to give a clue for it as well. Is it? Well, what score is a bullseye worth in archery? What score is a bullseye worth in archery? Is it similar to bullseye on the television or not? Um, oh, bullseye on the... Do you mean the quiz game? Yes. No, because that's based on darts. The, oh, I see. The figure is different. Is it? Yeah. The clue is... Yeah. I'll give you a clue. The number concerned is the only number which, no matter how many times you multiply it, the digits of the answer always add up to the number. Can you just repeat that again? Yes. The number is the one, there's only one, no matter how many times you multiply it, the digits of the answer always add up to the number. And we'll give you ten seconds. Right, thank you. The consensus... Nine. nine is the answer, and you have one second less. It is. It's nine. Right, Joe. And if you multiply nine, give me a number. Any number you like. Ninety-nine. Ninety-nine. Well, if you multiply nine by ninety-nine, you get what? Do you know? Neither do I. You get nine hundred less nine, which is eight hundred and ninety-one, yeah? Oh. Can't be right, that, can it? Yes, it can. Eight hundred and ninety-one, right? Right. That's 99 times 9, 891. I'm sure you are, so am I. I've got it wrong anyway, it's 991. It's 981, there we have got it. 981, that's 99 times 9. And if you add up the digits, 9, yeah. 8 and 1, mm. you get what? 18. Yeah. If you add 1 and 8, you get 9. Doesn't matter how many times you do it, whatever you multiply it by, number 9, you always end up with a multiple of 9 in the digits. Right. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? It is. <laughs> Flabbergasted. My dad told me that when I was okay. seven. Did he? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Didn't understand a word of it. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, you got it right. Do you want odds or evens? Odds, please. Odds for our Norman. Hey, up. Oh, another one. <laughs> Dun, 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 dun That means you've won a prize, because you got it right. You said odds, it's on 27. That is an odd number. Pick a number between 1 and 20. 15. 15. That's not gone, so what's in the window? Wobbly! Well, Norman, I'm bound to say this wrong. You've won for yourself a silver filigree butterfly brooch. Ooh. Hey. <laughs> filigree. You know what that means, don't you? No, not really. It's, it's like wire, oh. if I remember correctly. And it's silver wire, and it's a, a butterfly made out of 
silver wire, basically. Oh. All soldered together. It'll be very pretty. They always are. I've not seen it yet, but it'll be very pretty. Lovely. So you've won a butterfly. How nice. That's lovely. <laughs> That's lovely. Cheers. Yeah. Anyone you want to say hello to? Uh, yes, my, my daughter Adele, who I've been stopping with over Christmas, and her husband Peter, and my two grandchildren, Suzanne and Paul. OK, well, Norman, this address we've got, Kirkstone Drive, is that your address? Uh, it's my daughter's. It's your daughter's? Yes. OK, what's your address? Uh, is it... No, don't tell me oh, yet. Sorry. I'll tell you what, stay on the line and I'll get Warren to get your address from you because we need to we need to know your address rather than your daughter. OK, then. OK, so Look. stay on the line. Don't put the phone down. We'll be five minutes or so while we do with other contestants. Thanks very much. But Warren will come back to you and get your own address, all, all right? very best to you all for New Year. And yourself. Bye-bye okay, now. Bye. Don't go away. With you in a moment, or at least Wobbly will. Tony Andrews, how are you doing? Hello, Alan. Hello. Are you all right? I've got a bad cold. You've got a bad cold? Right. Well, don't talk straight into the microphone. Sort of put an anky over it, because right. we don't want your Germans, do we? <laughs> Royal Avenue, forward. New question for you. <laughs> Meet me on the corner. Hey, here we go with number 16, which is general knowledge. Me and Warren weren't very good at them on Boxing Day. Did you listen? No. Did you not? No. Savage toad. <laughs> right then, general... Oh, this is... Well, you can't get this wrong. Well, if you do, the next person will get it right, because it's a sort of guess. Is rhubarb... Rhubarb, rhubarb, rhubarb. Is rhubarb a fruit or a vegetable? <laughs> or a dog, as Warren says. A fruit. <laughs> it's a fruit, absolutely right. Do you want odds or evens? Uh, evens. Evens for Tony. Oh, dear. <laughs> You were close. <laughs> Never mind. You want to say hello to anyone, Tell? Eh, uh, no, it's all right. You don't like anybody? No. I know how you feel. Ta-ra! Ta-ra! Have an happy new year whether you like anybody or not. Uh, is that your blue car outside? Could be, why? Oh, the boys in blue were having a look at it. Oh, yeah? Yeah, they were at your tyres and your exhaust too. Oh, that's all right. Just bought a new set of tyres and a brand new exhaust system at the Ainsworth Half Price sale. Half Price? Aye. Those Ainsworth parts are in tip-top condition. They've been fitted by expert staff and they've all got the Ainsworth lifetime guarantees. The boys in blue won't nab me on any tyre and exhaust charges. Oh, that's probably why they stopped looking at your tyres and started looking at your tax. Uh, over here, officers! The Ainsworth Half Price sale. It's guaranteed to beat the blues. At least where tyres and exhausts are concerned. <laughs> Sofas for bedding, sofas for blinds, sofas for curtains, sofas have it all sewn up. Sofas Winter Sale starts Friday 27th December at 9.30. There are no gimmicks, just bargains in every department of sofas. Avon Accord, Dorma Colorol and Janet Rager quilt covers, discontinued designs and seconds at greatly reduced prices. 13.5 top quilts, non-allergenic hollow fibre from $14.99 or further down from $33.99. A fantastic range of pillows from as little as $1.99 for polyester or $45.99 for white goose down. Sopers open New Year's Day 9.30 till 5 and no gimmicks, just bargains. Sopers and Dan's on Sea, Kendall Poulton and now Stockport. Sopers have it all sewn up. Hello, Pete Reeves here. Last Christmas, and indeed every Christmas, people are injured, seriously injured or even killed in Lancashire as a result of drinking and driving. Not only have motorists who've been drinking become casualties, but also innocent people. Other drivers, riders and pedestrians have been injured or have lost their life leaving children parentless and parents childless. So this year, if you think you can drink and drive, think again. Think of others, not yourself. Please help to keep death and injury off the roads of Lancashire this Christmas. Don't drink and drive. This message was brought to you by Lancashire County Council Road Safety Section. Caring for your safety at all times. Thanks for calling the rat line. Here, yeah, Roland, there's someone impersonating you on the end of this phone. It is me, you idiot. I don't understand. If you dial 0800 800 800, you can listen to my wonderful, hunky, sexy voice. I wouldn't pee to listen to your monotonous voice. Ah, no, you don't have to, Errol, because it's free. Na, 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 na. I'll dial the number immediately. No need to, Kev. The rat line's open all over the festive season. I bet you only get three people ringing you up, and one of them will be your mum. Oh, shut up, Errol. The Rat Line is brought to you by courtesy of British Telecom's new link line service, who offer you a free call on 0800 800 800. Yeah! Broadbent and Boothroyd's Great Sale is on now. Amazing price cuts. See for yourself. Broadbent and Boothroyd's of Southport. Great Sale on now. Red 
This is Red Rose Radio, brought to you in the world service. Well, it seems that way sometimes. We get people ringing this programme from all over the show. Badden is rotten in, not a badden at all. Right, Manuel, come here. Today I'm giving you a lesson in economics. Yeah? Eco- oh, forget it. As they like to call it round there. To talk to Jacqueline McNamara of Derby Street. How do? Hello. Hello. Are you all right? Just fine. Hey, <laughs> good. It says here that you're a care assistant. Yes. Does that mean you look after other people's monsters? Like Pardon? children. No, I look after um, old people. Oh, that's all right, that. They, they at least are human beings, which children aren't, you know. <laughs> children are horrible. They're like miniature gorillas going round waiting to do some horrid. Not that bad. <laughs> oh, they are. <laughs> they can be dreadful. I mean, when they're very tiny, they whittle on you. And then as they get bigger, they do worse things. <laughs> but old people are all right. Do you enjoy it? Yeah, I love it. Damned hard graft, isn't it? Well... You don't mind hard graft? No, not really. Good, you can come and dig our garden. <laughs> <laughs> right, Jacqueline, let's see if we can find a question for you. Are you ready? Yes. Here we go. Never going to stop. Yes, it has. 35. Television. Do you watch a lot of telly? Yes, I do. You do? Have you been watching it for long? Like 25 years? 24 years, actually. You've been, you're only 24? Yeah. Oh, well, this started... Sound all right. This started around about the time when you were born, I think. Oh. Perhaps not as long ago as that. Which actor played the first Doctor Who? The first Doctor Who. Can you Who? give me a clue? Yes, I can give you a clue. His first name, that's his Christian name, yeah. when abbreviated, is one of them things you get off the gas board once a quarter. And his second name sounds like a very warm piece of your anatomy with a bell on it. A warm piece of your anatomy with a bell on it. Uh, William something. Well, I'm sure that's right. <laughs> what about what about this this warm piece of your anatomy? It comes it comes in handy on Valentine's Day. Which bit of your anatomy comes in handy on Valentine's Day? Heart. I was a bit worried then. Yes, heart. Now then, if, you, if your heart beats not at all, right, mm. it will sound your death something. Sounds like bell. A death something. Toll. So, no, it doesn't sound like bell, that, does it? <laughs> Toll, bell. You'll never be a poet, will you? Peel. So, peel. That doesn't sound like bell either, does it? That's what you have around an orange. Ring. No. That doesn't sound like bell. Only a bell sounds like it. It rhymes with bell, right? Rhymes with bell. Right? Bell. <laughs> no. Bell? No. <laughs> First part of a woman's name. Not on your... Nell. Nell. Right, so what's his name? William? Hartnell. Hartnell. You see? <laughs> I knew you knew it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I'm not telling you what Billy's just handed me. By gum. <laughs> William Hartnell. He was the first actor who played Doctor Who, and I've never heard of him either. <laughs> and I used to watch it. Never mind, Jacqueline. Do you want odds or evens? Evens. Evens for our Jackie. The 35. <laughs> <laughs> and you a mere stripling 24 year old <laughs> not to matter do you want to say hello to anyone Jacqueline um, I want to say hello to my mum and dad 
and my grandma, <laughs> if she's listening. Okay, we'll keep looking after them aged peas. Okay. Ta-ra. Bye-bye. Amanda Astley. How are you? All right, thanks. You're right. Uh, how's Blackburn? All right. It's a bit, <laughs> a bit parky. Cold. When I come through this morning, someone someone had actually, when I come through Blackburn this morning, they'd, they'd spilt what looked like a bucket of water on the road. Yeah. And it was solid. <laughs> it's solid. always like that. I know, it's always cold around there. Never mind, it's a good place to go shopping, Blackburn. Yeah. <laughs> I do my Christmas shopping there. Or I did. I'm not doing any more. I'm never going to buy Christmas presents again. I'm never going to face Christmas again. When Christmas <laughs> comes, I'm going to dig a shed in our garden, dig a tunnel in our garden and hide next year. <laughs> I am honest, because it's horrible, isn't it? Yeah. All that eating and drinking and being happy. Oh, <laughs> it's on your nerves. Now then, Amanda, a new question for this. Number 30. Oh, this is a piece of cake. General knowledge, this a dead easy one. What is the date of Halloween? October 31st. October the 31st is absolutely correct. Do you want odds or evens? Odds. There you are. <laughs> you jammy toad. <laughs> hey? Did you say odds or even? Odds. I knew you'd add, because it's number 11. That's an odd number. You've won a prize. Avoiding 7, 9, 19 or 15. Pick a number between Good one... Boy. Let me finish. <laughs> Let me finish. Cut me off in my prime, then, woman. <laughs> right, then. Avoiding number 7, number 9, number 19 and number 15. Pick a number between 1 and 20. Number 4. That's what I thought you said. What's in the window? Wobbly! Well, Amanda, you'll be shooting. Hang on a minute. By gum. You cut me off. That's a jam. Ah, well, you deserve it. That's a jackpot number, number four. <laughs> I nearly missed it, I'll tell you. What's in the window, Warren? Well, Amanda, you'll be able to get the time wherever you go with this Timex Snoopy watch. Ah, oh, <laughs> isn't that nice? You'd like that, wouldn't you, Warren? No. <laughs> you would. You're I not hate a Snoopy. Do you? I don't like Snoopy. You'll not be on this show again. He's my hero. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> it's your job. Do you like Snoopy, Amanda? It's all right. It's all right. Well, you've won a Snoopy. Are there, are there any little Astleys? Yeah, I've got two nieces. Two nieces? Yeah. Oh, well, in that case, one of them has won a Snoopy watch by the sound of <laughs> You've also got to go at the jackpot. Oh, God. Yes, which means you could win yourself a case each of white wine, red wine and champagne from Wymott's Wine Warehouses of Wigan and Lytham, plus a compact disc player. All right? Yeah. Now, it's one of them that you have to plug into an amplifier, so you need to have an hi-fi and all that. But you just bung it in, and then you put compact discs on it. And all that ooch as well. Can a man ask for more? <laughs> no. Can a woman ask for more? Nobody can ask for more, because you're not getting any more. Right, Amanda, here we go. What you've got to do is guess odds or evens as many times as you can correctly. You've got six to beat. The current leader is Betty McQuillan of Collingwood Road in Chorley. Are you ready? Yeah. I can't help you, so when you're ready, off we go. Oh. Number three, that's one. Even. I thought it was never going to stop then. 24, that's two. Even. 22, that's three. Even. Number 12, that's four. Oh. Number 21, that's five. Oh. Zero. Oh. <laughs> Good grief. <laughs> Ecky thump. Never mind, Amanda. A Snoopy watch will be on its way to you ere long at air. All right. Is there anyone you want to say hello to? Yeah, to my fiancé, Chris, and my mum and dad and all the rest of my family and anybody you want to know. So that's why there's no little last list. <laughs> <laughs> you could hang on to it, I suppose, but it's perhaps a bit of wishful thinking. Never mind, Amanda. Thanks very much for right, taking part. Thanks. Have yourself a happy new year. Same to you. Turn around now. Bye. John McIntyre, line four in Leyland. How are you doing? Oh, all right. Actually in Moss Side. Yeah. Older close. That's right. A technical assistant. That's correct. You're one of them, aren't you, Wobbly? You're no. my technical assistant, oh, you are. Yes. You're technically my assistant. I'm thinking of the other job. 
What other job? Upstairs. Oh, when you're on the computer? Yeah. Well, in Bog Eye, the one that <laughs> makes a mess of all the ads, yeah, the other one. Because he's, he's not just a pretty face, Warren, he's not just a front of house manager, you know. He does all the background stuff as well. Clever he is. Highly intelligent. Highly, yes, yes, mm. highly. Very good, yeah. Right, well, we'll spin the wheel, should we? Yep. Since now we got his fibs out of the way, here we go. Is it, is it, hey, it won't go. Come on, my wheel's stuck. Needs a bit of oil on it. We'll get wobbly doing it, easier man. 29. Oh, a flim question. Do you know it about flims? Mm, a lot, a lot. Uh, not a lot? No. Right then, well, you'll have to know this or she'll get an out. In the 1962 film, Lawrence of Arabia, mm -hmm. who played Lawrence? Peter O'Toole. Peter O'Toole, you knew that straight away, well done. Do you want odds or even? Uh, odds, please. Boying number 12, an even number. <laughs> Never mind, John, do you want to say hello to anyone? Um, just all my family, Melanie, and Phil, Kath, and anyone who knows me. OK, turn around. Bye-bye. See you, John. That's it for today. No more contestants, so you can stop ringing, cos we've run out of time. It's time to play some music and some advertisements and get you in the mood for country music. Yes, well, that won't be possible, will it, really, to get in the mood for that rubbish? Today, I've come to International Ford at Broad. It's all a bit noisy, isn't it? All that record a bit noisy. Congratulations, sincere congratulations to Betty McQuillan, who's been in the lead on It's Your Turn for some weeks now, with six correct guesses, predictions, call them what you will, as to where the ball would land in our jackpot competition. Betty McQuillan of Collingwood Road in Chorley, you are shortly to be the proud owner of a Philips CD150 compact disc player, and also the not-so-proud owner, because <laughs> you don't behave too proud when you've supped all this lot, a case each of white wine, red wine and champagne from Wymott's Wine Warehouses of Wigan and Latham. We'll get in touch with you very shortly to organise the delivery of those, and well done. No writing competition this week. It's your turn back next Sunday on January the 1st, which I think is on Thursday, but it might be... Hang on, what date is it today? Hang on. 29th. 30th on Monday. 31st. No, it's on Wednesday, right? On Wednesday, I'm on in the afternoon instead of the evening. And in, in the afternoon, we're doing a phone-in. Not a competition exactly, although I'm sure there'll be some fun had by all, but between 12 and 3, lunchtime, early afternoon on New Year's Day, we're doing, as you might have guessed, a resolutions phone-in. You tell me mine, you tell me yours, and I'll possibly tell you mine. Anyway, that's what's happening on New Year's Day. January's jackpot, starting next Sunday, is an Air Link Express three-star weekend for two in Paris, valued at 280 quid. Be sure to tune in. Next Sunday. And of course the writing competitions will be back next Sunday when the post post when the post has sorted itself out. It's six minutes to one. Country and Western next with Mike Tunstall. Here's Elton John with proper music. <laughs> Compiled by Gallup, this is our exclusive countdown of the hits that made 1985. At number 10, Love and Pride from King. Number 9, A Good Heart, Fergal Sharkey. At 8, Take On Me, Aha. At 7, Move Closer, Phyllis Nelson. 6, Dancing in the Street, David Bowie and Mick Jagger. 5, Frankie from Sister Sledge. 4, 19 from Paul Hardcastle. At number 3, Into the Groove, Madonna. Number 2, I Know Him So Well, Elaine Page and Barbara Dixon. And the year's top-selling single, it's Jennifer Rush.